E S H blank T. Clinton server employee. Really? And Jake uh, Woodpecker doesn't find that an interesting story, huh? All he does is find Ben Carson left cotton in someone's head. How come Jake uh, Woodpecker doesn't cover up that, uh, follow up that story? It's covering up some shady S-H blank T, says Clinton server employee. But Jake uh, Woodpecker doesn't want to cover that story. No, that, that, that doesn't make it to the news. That does, but Donald Trump's hairdo does, or, uh, or Ben Carson left cotton in someone's brain. That's all. That's the news we have today. All right, what do you want to talk about on the show? Uh, well, there's a couple of good stories. Women, Trump, families, the suicide, Obama, the census, how Obama hates a certain demographic in America because it's the side of his genetics that he hates. He decided to mm, get rid of it, being like Adolf did, because... Uh, <clears throat> What would you like to talk about on the Savage Nation? Uh, eh, I don't know. None of these calls. Uh, get into the calls. I'm going to wish I didn't. Let's go to sound for a minute before we take a break. We got this. Here's the smorgasbord of the calls today. Here's my sound smorgasbord for uh, Wednesday, October 7th. Savage replay of Trump boiled down to four minutes. Savage replay, hidden wing of this government may be getting ready to pull Obama. Yeah, I don't know. That was a thought yesterday. No one even commented on it. It was an insight and a, you know, remarks by the president after meeting with agriculture and business leaders on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Oh, my God, what a sellout that is. Obama says GOP would have, uh, would have had the U.S. in seven wars right now. Farrakhan says Trump and ISIS are signs God is sending plagues down on America. Well, I think Farrakhan was the first plague. I think Al Sharpton was the second plague. And I think Obama was the third plague. But that's just one man's opinion. Josh Ernst stole my line. Listen to this, that putz. He says, Putin is playing checkers, not chess. You hear this? What a moron. Hey, Josh, you know, create something original. I've been saying this for years now. Checkers, chess, triple chess. Steal that next, triple chess. Your boss is such a genius that Obama is doing nothing in Syria, hasn't stopped ISIS after a year of bombing, and in one week, Russia's already got them on the run, but he's playing checkers, right? Well, let me tell you something. If Putin's playing checkers, I'll take that over the chest that Obama's playing because apparently he learned it on the back of a, of a milk carton. Where are we in time? 19 minutes after the hour. I'm, I'm out of time. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I don't know if those of you who listen to the show ever look at your horoscope. I, uh, I look at it every day. I don't know. I'm like, I go to Sally Brompton. I know it's stupid, but I'm addicted to it. It's like a fortune cookie. It's fun. I, I mean, I open fortune cookies. I don't eat it because it's made of lard and sugar. I don't eat that garbage. But who doesn't open an innocent fortune cooker uh, for restaurant? And you know, you joke around like you get into, oh, that's really yours because of the way, and then you give it to someone else. It's, just, it's like a lot, little thing. So I read my horoscope. It says, Aries, things are going well for you at the moment, but today's Mars-Neptune link may make it a bit harder to get along with someone on the work front. A bit harder? Me? A bit harder for me to get along with someone on the work front? Nah. Then it says, the fact is you can quite easily get along without the help, so don't worry about it. That, that's the right attitude. <laughs> a bit harder to get along with someone on the work front? How about, uh, okay, let it go with that. Then I always read, like, the horoscopes of friends and family. I don't send it to them because they, they don't really believe in this stuff. Then there's, like, religious people who get mad at you if you send them a horoscope. Like, that's, like, like horrible to read that. And Jesus will, I, you know, I, you know, whatever works, man. The Pope, Pope probably reads his horoscope in, in, in Rome, that kind of Pope. Barry has him delivered, but he has an astrologer come to see him, for all I can tell. He's such a cool guy. He's such a liberal pope. I wouldn't doubt that he has an astrologer visiting on the Vatican, along with the pizza. Here's another one I saw. Rosie O'Donnell's daughter blasts her. <laughs> Did you see this yesterday? And like, oh, I'm shocked. Rosie O'Donnell's daughter blasts her as a pot-smoking phony. This is so ironic, right? Lesbian adopts daughters, and she turns on him. Turns on her. She blows the whistle on who, the, who she really is. She said, uh, I find her not genuine a lot of the time. When we go out, she was a completely different person in public than at home, and I had a hard time with that. It's like two different people, said O'Donnell's daughter. She called her a pot-smoking phony. She said she has this public persona. She will put this big smile on her face and try to be funny. 
Whereas when we were at home, she would either be just in her room, not engaging with us, or watching documentaries, probably produced by that fat slob who made millions lying to the stupid potheads out there. She's, and Rosie would eat takeout with us, and if there were cookies in the house, she would eat all of them. She was always coming into our rooms and asking if we had candy. I mean, she smokes weed. Not around us, but the whole house smells like it. Uh, Chelsea also revealed of her mom's personal life. She has some speakers set up, and she blasts Madonna. She's obsessed with her. She likes Eminem and Chris. How boring. Rosie O'Donnell has five children, is in a custody battle over a two-year-old daughter, Dakota, with ex-Michelle Rounds. So this is a funny thing, right? Like, lesbian adopts children. She figures, like, the daughter would be on her side her whole life, right? Now the daughter blows the whistle on her. Hates the mother. So it just shows you that it doesn't matter what your sexual orientation is. Raising children is difficult. Even if you're a super liberal, a daughter could turn on you. Well, it usually works that way. They're usually the opposite of the parent. If you're like a rock rib, you know, conservative, they become a psycho lib. Then you're a lib, they become a conservative. She'll probably vote for Trump, the daughter. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. I have a uh, friend, the one doctor I go to, he's a cardiologist. I have nothing wrong with my heart, thank God. But he's a nice guy. and he, So whenever I need anything, I go to him. Then he sends me to the lab. They say, who's your primary doctor? I say, I have none. But the point is, he once said to me, he's a great guy, he said, he, know, he had a 90-year-old patient who said to him, he asked him, what's the secret to longevity? The old man said, never let an old person live in your body. I've always remembered that. And every time I get like an old guy in my head who wants to like become the old guy, me to go, I say, go away. I don't want to hear you. I'm not ready for you yet. Because people act out what they want to be. You know that. It's like, oh, I'm depressed. Well, you get more depressed. But you know, I'm depressed. You mean you own the depression? Yeah, I'm depressed. The whole society is encouraging you to be a loser and sick, a cripple dependent on the government. Fight it. So my mother taught me, fight it. I remember when I started to complain when I was young, she'd say, what do you think, I don't have aches and pains? Just forget about it, go to school. Today, oh, really, maybe you have this, maybe you have that. Let's keep you out, let's get you a special tutor. Let's de declare you very special. So you can go on a rampage with a gun in a school. You know, indulging every little whim of yours. Like my lunch just arrived. I'm on here now an hour and a half, I'm starving to death. So it arrived, like was pad thai with, with uh, prawns. With Sorry, with hot sauce. I was trying to like gag on it in, in the break, and I, it screws up the show because I start to like gag on the food during the break, but I can't help it. I mean, it's a trap. I cannot go without eating for three hours after what, with the blood pull this morning. So I got low blood sugar, so I'm eating during the show, and I'm like, see, I learned, I have a psychiatrist friend, I haven't seen him in a while, great guy. He said, the reason that you're successful is that you come from a generation and from an ethnic background which has taught you denial. You were taught from the earliest age to delay gratification. You were taught to put off your gratification for another day. You were taught to wait for your reward. And as a result, you could wait years for your rewards. And I waited, I waited 20 years for my reward, meaning the success I have in radio and writing. I was working hard, but it just didn't come to me no matter what I did. I called myself a wildcatter for all the years that I really needed the success and couldn't have what I wanted when the kids were young was very hard to bear. I would have loved to have had the success I have now when my kids were young. But when I talk to my kids about it, they say, Dad, guess what? We were stronger as a result of it because we had to work. Otherwise, you would have just handed it to us, and we'd be like all the other kids who had it handed to them, like drug addicts and losers. Take a look at San Francisco. Take a look at Pacific Heights. Ask yourself how many of the kids that come out of those mansions on the hills have amounted to anything. The answer is zero. Zero. The whole infrastructure of San Francisco, the whole so-called society, the upper crust, whores, degenerates, drug addicts, grifters, and, and thieves. That's all. And look at the kids. Why? Because the kids had everything handed to them. In 49, the miners came in 51, the horse. I didn't write that. Mark Twain wrote that. He wrote it. I mean, he was the one who wrote it. He's an American. 49 of them. I almost got killed a few times for saying that in San Francisco. When they try to pull the, the, the uh, society number on me. And so, oh, I'm a native son of the Golden West. What does that mean? What, because I came here in 1974, you're better than me? I said, wait, but let me quote Mark Twain. In 49, the miners came in 51, the whores. And from them came the native sons of the Golden West. He wrote that. I didn't. I'm not knocking the native sons, but he's trying to make a point. So what? 
So people have these these things like I was born here, my grandfather was born here. So what? Does that make you better? You know, grow up, stand on your own laurels if you have any. So I'm I'm putting it off now to uh, to eat during the next break. It's a real trick. Is like I took two bites, started to gag on it. So I said, "Play Neil Young to stretch out the break." Then I come back and I'm like the food's caught in my gullet. I start I start to choke. I'm starving. The food's sitting there in the in the radio kitchen. I had to seal it up with the aluminum foil and the packaging to make sure it's got a, a modicum of heat coming out of it when I get back there. So I think it's time to play this moron. The Goebbels of our time, Josh Ernst, who is Obama's Goebbels. Listen to this moron, a clip 11. President Putin is playing chess. He's playing checkers. <laughs> uh, and I say that because he's making a you series say? of tactical decisions oh, yeah. that are leading to a starkly negative strategic oh, conclusion. Yes. Oh, you would know. Which is that by making the tactical decision to ramp up their support for the Assad regime, who is this Russia moron? is being sucked into... Uh, a sectarian civil war, essentially a quagmire that poses a whole into it? set of risks to Russia's interests, not just in the region, but back at home. Can you believe this moron, this idiot who never fired a Daisy BB gun is telling Putin he's wrong? Where do they get these schmucks from? Here's an example of a putt so over his head that he gets up there and gives a speech like this. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Oh, yeah, I think Putin is playing checkers. You're not playing chess like my genius Obama. Yeah, Obama's playing chess. Let me tell you, the checkers that Putin is playing is about 50 times smarter than the chess that Obama learned on the back of a milk carton. What do you mean he's playing che checkers? Well, you mean you weren't in the sectarian civil war, Josh, your boss, and the sorority that pays you your salary, you, you moron you? You aren't in the sectarian civil war funding all of these CIA front groups that were trying to bring down Assad, you idiot? Who are you fooling? Then you got Tony Blair giving a speech now. The biggest failure in history. It runs a think tank, again attacking Russia for doing something that the scared, scaredy cat Brits, all the sissies that run Britain now, did nothing against ISIS with that loudmouth Cameron, with then another one with a great booming voice. Well, I think that uh, seriously we must. Uh, oh, they always have these booming voices, these great voices, but empty. It's called, you know, the Hollow Man. Who wrote the Hollow Man? Anyway, raise your hand if you know who wrote the Hollow Man. Whoever knows who wrote The Hollow Man reads, gets a free copy of what? Government Zero by Michael Savage. Who wrote The Hollow Man? It's pretty good, by the way. The Straw Man, The Hollow Man. Remember that one? Was it Yates? I'm not sure. I'm guessing. No one knows who he is. Now they're reading a crack, a crack addict uh, with gold chains hanging down his neck who uh, worked for Black Lives Matter, who was invited to Yale. That's the new literary star in, in America today. He knows 60 words of English, but he's a literary star. They don't even. They never heard of Yates, dead white male. No, they they heard of Black Lives Matter and kill the police, wrap the pigs in bacon. That that's the new the new song of America, the song of America, wrap the pigs in bacon. All right, KKOB Shane, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hey, sir. Um, real quick, yesterday you asked a question about Donald Trump, and what did we notice? The thing that I noticed is for the first time he actually sounded presidential and that excites me because maybe but why would you think that you were able to hear that on my show where well, you don't hear it on cnn or fox news why doesn't he sound presidential there uh, according to you well because usually they're baiting him and he's very defensive when he oh so they try in other words they're only trying to get him with a gotcha question well that's all anil cavuto could do a guy like him would have been a chef in my day you're he would have been a chef in a Denny's. The, the most a guy like Neil Cavuto ever could have been in my time was a, a pastry chef in Denny's. I, I, you're absolutely right. And I, and I said, no, oh, what are they trying to set him up? What are they set him up? A guy 50,000 times smarter than them. But you're saying it doesn't let Donald Trump explain himself. You're, you're absolutely right, sir. If he would actually be able to talk and not be on the defensive and have more forums like yours where he can actually talk and present his plans for our country that's going to help and i hope he does win um, well, i hope so too i'm 100 percent for him i think he's the only chance we have to save america and that's why i've gone way out on a limb on defending him and backing him 100 percent. i don't mince words i'm not couching it i'm out front with what i believe i back trump period end of story i hope he's in it for the long haul i hope he can stand the vermin in the media and i hope he gets to debate hillary and he wipes the floor with that witch other than that i have no opinion on the matter now, sir, stay on the line. I'm sending you a free, fresh copy of Government Zero 
booming up the charts on Amazon.com. I can't wait for the day it's out already. 